三不妥协无上甚深微妙法百千万劫难遭遇我尽见闻的受持愿劫如来真实义 Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Okay, Amitofo, thank you for the Dharma request. My question for all of you, how do you pronounce that word? <laughs> I love it. Homage. Mostly every time people go homage, <laughs> like a homing pigeon, you know coming home. Homage. Homage to the blessed. Yeah, yeah, good. Maybe there's a Malaysian way to say it, a Singaporean way. To say it. Maybe I'm the one, who, my American pronunciation. Sanskrit. Share screen. Ah. Okay, will do. Thank you. Share screen. Good. Okay. That's English. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for coming out tonight. Boy, you've had a very full day here at our repentance liturgy, and it's late at night, and you're here. Let's see here. Ah, Sheng Yin Hen Hao. Hao La. Qing Fa Zhong. And then that comment. Good. Those are my comments. So I uh, appreciate that all of you have come out. Now we have uh, with us at the moment uh, 48 people from around the world listening in. Let's see where they're from. Just out of curiosity. They are from, let's see here, Ooh, lots of co-hosts. Jinan Fa Jie Yi Gong, Wa Hao Ji Ge. Uh, Ernie and Xing Fei are calling in from Sydney. Uh, Mr. Lai from Malaysia. Connie from Sunnyvale. David is here from the Gulf Coast. Zhongguo Liaoning. Oh, uh, Guangdong. Guo Shan Shi. Huan Ying Huan, Beijing. Okay, Karina is listening in. Catherine from Malaysia. Mr. Lim from Malaysia. Uh, Mr. Lu from Liaoning. Let's see here, Tracy. Here, who else? Lots of friends. Okay, very glad that you're here. Uh, Zhongguo Hainin, Shandong, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Nanjing, uh, how to get even Beijing, Chengdu, oh, Chengdu, Ren, good door. Uh, you get Taiwan, Ren, the mail, Nikan. Whoa, woman in Gashan, Taiwan, like Shenzhen. Okay. Good. So, uh, again, uh, does everyone, so you all think Putonghua the Rendo Fu Arjima? You all know? You mean do you? Kanang Yoda, Jodana Renja Renja. Hi, you may fashion Jang Liu Li Ying Wen, so you were sent at you. Mian Chang, I shi shi ying one, ma. You may all. Who way? Okay. So, Kui, Ting Ning Arji, Han Ha Ting, woman, Yi Gong, Bani, the Bei Chang. Okay. So that means I can speak English and uh, don't have to, don't have to uh, make your ears tired with my American Chinese. Good. Okay. Let's see now. Uh, last night we talked about um, the. Uh, some of the basic principles of repentance. And we talked a little bit about Pu Shen Pusa and his 10 vows. And that if you want to practice,
practice to get the uh, ten vows, just the essentials. 你们你们都有耳机吗？听不懂我的英文呢？都有了哈。Huh? Okay, 好，好 ，Okay. 那个呃、uh, ，you can take the ten down to two, and you still get the merit and virtue. And one is repentance, and the other is transference. That was a big awareness for me to learn that. That was a big surprise. So.、Um, Host has asked you to start my video. I don't have a video. Should I start my video? Yes. Start my video. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. Good. Okay. So、um, here's what、uh, I would like to talk about.、Um, I would like to continue our investigation of those ten practices. Samanta Bhadra, Pushan Pusa. We translate his name. We used to say Universal Worthy.、Uh, we think there might be a better translation, something like、uh, All Good Bodhisattva. It's All Good, All Good Bodhisattva. Something like maybe、uh, Everywhere Good or、uh, Thoroughly Good Bodhisattva. Really good, really good. Pushan. Something like that, something a little closer to home than Universal Worthy. Universal Worthy sounds like a vacuum cleaner brand, doesn't it? Sounds like the name you could market. <laughs> yeah. So、um, as Buddhism comes to Australia, Buddhism comes to the West. We're learning how to what will what will survive, what will stay.、Uh, so. One of the things I would like to impress upon everyone is that those ten kings of vows, Shi Da Yuan Wang of Pushan Pusa, are very close to us. They're not far away. They're not philosophy. They're not for all、oh, the monks and nuns, and not part of me. No, they're everyday, everyday thing. And the first one, Li Jing Zhu Fu, right? You all know that one. Last night we tried. Everybody pretty much knew.、It、sounded like. You all knew the ten, right? Li Jo Li Jing Ju Fu, starting there, right? So what I thought would be good would be to look into that one in particular.、Uh, let's see what we got here. This is he. Here he is. Pu Xian Pu Sa. Um, can or is that clear? Is that nice and bright? Okay, good, good. Nice strong projector. Okay. Now、uh, we have done this homage, homage, homage. Oh, and actually, come to think of it, if you're speaking French, ah,、oh, there we go. That's probably why. If we're speaking French, how do you say that word? Homage. Ah,、uh, so homage. People say homage, homage to the blessed, right? English. Homage, homage, okay. Homage to the blessed. All right, all right. So、um, we have done that request. We have done the Kaijing Ji. Here we go. Do the English here. Get through. Okay. The things that I know about bowing, I learned from Shifu, from Master Shenhua. And it's、uh, if you want to know somebody who is an expert about bowing, here he is. He absolutely、uh, started his practice through bowing, right? You know that story that、uh, from Shrifu's biography. But when、uh, he was a young man, just ten years old, he what? Wanted to practice being filial, and his he was not. <laughs> he was pretty、uh, Chinese. They say tiao pi. He was very naughty. He just was so full of energy that they couldn't keep him down. He was famous for doing such things as standing on a galloping horse bareback, riding while the horse was galloping, right, keeping his balance so the horse is kernel kernel like that. Master Hua was difficult to tame, 
Gang Chang Nan Hua. Now, at one point, he was disciplined and he felt ashamed. And so he thought, oh, I better straighten out. And what do, in, in his Manchuria, rural Manchuria, uh, there was this thing called Xiao Zi, filial children. And they became famous. They were held up in the neighbor in the villages, just, you know, the way you should be as a child. And there were some very famous Xiao Zi where he was. So he decided he was going to be a Xiao Zi. And he thought, oh, what do you do? Oh, you need to bow to your parents. You need to Xiang Fu Mu Lai Ko To. That's what he, so he said, he bowed to his parents and they said, stop it. What are you doing? Just, just Ting Hua, Go La, Go La. Just, you know, Bu Bi, the Hua Yang, you know. You don't have to show off, just, just, just listen to what we tell you what to do. You don't have, so they said, do not bow like that. So he said, well, I'm going to move out into the yard and keep bowing because I know filial children have to bow. So <laughs> being a typical uh, stubborn young man, he went out into the yard and faced his parents through the wall of the house and bowed, and bowed, and bowed. And then she started to think about, uh, he liked bowing. It's really a pleasant activity. So he continued to bow and he started to add bows. He thought, oh, at some point, I would like to be a bodhisattva. I would like to become a Buddhist. So how can I, how can I be a Buddhist? I need a teacher. I think I'll bow to my teacher in the future who hasn't shown up yet. So he started to bow to his future teacher, bowing, you know, 108 bows. Then he thought, oh man, what if I get to be a monk? I, I will have another teacher. I think I'll bow to him too. And then maybe I better bow to the Buddha just in case. So he started adding bows. And then he thought, this is really good. I like to bow. What about the bad people in the world who don't know enough to bow? Maybe I should bow on their behalf. So he started to bow on behalf of people who didn't know to bow. So as he added up his numbers of bows, he was doing over 800 bows in the morning and over 800 bows at night, twice a day. And of course, you bow pretty fast to get in 800. Otherwise, you're there all day. So this is how he did it for 10 years. And I will tell you, uh, what do they say? Gong bu tang jian. They say work, uh, cult work in cultivation is not work wasted. It is not wasted. I, in 1978, my first visit to Malaysia, 1978, my first visit to Malaysia, somebody's in there doing 1978 and you're still alive? Wow, you're old. Wow, 1978. Yeah, my first visit to Malaysia. I think I've been back to Malaysia perhaps 12 times since then, many times. So 1978, we're accompanying Master Shrenhua to little towns. We went to Coast and Klang. We went to Mabo. We went to Tringanu, Dingjalo. We went to uh, Maju Vashat, right? We went to all kinds of little towns, all up and down. Of course, up in Penang, and Butterworth, and you know, Aguan knows he was he was there. So we uh, anyway, many of these little towns, Master Hua would be uh, his. The the audience was too big for the local temple. So we would go to the biggest local venue in the small town, the basketball court or the gymnasium. And Master Hua would lecture. And then uh, at the end, instead of jumping in the bus and going back to the, to the dormitory or wherever the uh, Wisma Buddhist was, Shrifu would take a chair and set it down in the center of the gymnasium floor and sit in the chair and the monks, nuns would gather around behind him and people would spontaneously make a line that would go around the gym and then out the door waiting for a chance to bow to him. Nobody told them. They would just, you could see, they wanted to. They wanted to. And it would take half an hour. And after a while we would go, okay, uh, two rows, two rows, you know, 
don't, don't bow three times, one bow, one bow, <laughs> you know. And and because otherwise everybody's like going slowly bowing once. Everyone's like, you know, <laughs> slowly bowing twice, one bow. So Master Hua would say, you know, what do you see here? And we go, sure, but we see a lot of people bowing. And, he, and why do you think they're bowing like this? So many people. And we don't know, Shifu. He would say, They're just bowing back. They're repaying my bowing. Right? Ten years, 800 bows in the morning, 800 bows at night. I don't know. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. We saw that. And that's what people wanted to do. And so just kind of amazing affinity. Bowing is a very powerful method of practice. Very powerful Dharma door. So we shouldn't look lightly upon it. Uh, here is Samantabhadra. Okay. Uh, there we go. Let's get this out of the way here. This control bar is in the way. There we go. Okay. There he is on his elephant. There he goes. Uh, this, I, at one point, I did a three lecture series on Samantabhadra. So this is just the essence of that. Um, Bodhisattva's vows. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the sutra that I studied. Now, our uh, Emperor Liang's repentance is not based on the Avatamsaka, but it is connected to the Avatamsaka. And the Avatamsaka, Huayanjing, has three different versions of it. One is 60 scrolls, Liu Shijian. One is 80 scrolls, Ba Shijian Huayan. One is 40 scrolls, the Si Shijian Huayan. Number 40 is the one that has Pu Xian Kang Yan Pi. The full name is Ru Bu Si Jie Tuo Jing Jie Pu Xian Heng Yan Pin. It's the inconceivable state, inconceivable liberated state of Samantabhadra's practices and vows. Chapter 40, we call it. Uh, and originally, people say it was the verses. It was Chong Song first. Then uh, the longer uh, lines, the Chang Hang, the prose got, got written down. Do you know what those verses are? So yo shi fang shi jie jong san shi yi che ren shi zi wo yi fu xin hong yan li fu lian gong yang zhu lai ba shi ba fu Every other night, right? That's the verses, some of the verses from fu xin hong yan ping. Um, now, as we mentioned last night, Ordinarily, we talk about the four great bodhisattvas. We talk about Manjushri, Samantabhadra, Avalokiteshvara, and Kshidigarbha. Manchu Pusa, Pushen Pusa, Guanyin Pusa, Tizang Pusa. And of the four, Samantabhadra is the least known. He's kind of the quiet corner bodhisattva. But there's, we do know a lot about him. And one is he has a mountain in China where people go to pay their respects, that is Umei Shan out in Sichuan. And you can't quite see it because this thing is in the way here. But th this is called Jinding, Golden Peak up here on the top. And my first visit there was in 1989. Since then, oh, a lot of changes, a lot of development. But it's still a very magical place. And he, Samantabhadra Bodhisattva, rides an elephant. So interesting. This is the, uh, we talked about the uh, Wan Yan Si up on Umei Shan. This is a picture from Wan Yan Si. There he is. We uh, chanted his ten vows in Chinese and then in English there. And uh, the sound carried half a mile. And we got a free lunch out of that. So that was good. 
Uh, this is a Japanese version of Samantabhadra's elephant. His name is Airavana, Airavana. And he has a story. He's got a backstory. And it's a very interesting story. He turns out, uh, I won't go into all of it, but he's a bodhisattva who misbehaved. And as a result, uh, was reincarnated in an elephant's body with the vows to protect Fushen Pusa and also Yu Huang Dadi, Nega Yintola, Yintola Wang, Shi Ti Huan Yin. So this elephant can incarnate into a human from time to time, but he has to come back in the elephant's body to pay off his debts. Interesting story, right? He is very, very magnificent, adorned, beautiful. If you want to know more about the elephant, just in case, just you can file this one away, go take a look at the Fa Hua Jing, the Pu Shen Hung, uh, Guan Pu Shen Hung King. In the Lotus Sutra, the last chapter of the Lotus, there's a lot more on uh, the elephant. So just file that one away. Also, uh, people don't know that Pushen Pusa is considered to be the most Zhuang Yan. That's the word we say in Chinese. The most magnificent, the most splendid of all the bodhisattvas. The, um, if you read the Pushen Hung Yanping, you discover that one of the rewards of cultivating the ten practices and vows, one of the good things that happens is you can get a body like Fushen Pusa. You can appear like him uh, if you cultivate those ten vows to perfection. So this is a Japanese uh, court artist's version of Samantabhadra. All right, look at his canopy. Ooh, quite wonderful. Okay, here he is with his... Oh, that's Manjushri with his lion. Now, I want to, uh, we are going to look into bowing, but we're going to first get there through Fushen Pusa. Um, last night, uh, let's see here. Oops, start my video back up. There we are. Ah, that's what it meant, Sam, my video. I had shut it off. Okay, there we go. Now, one of the things... Um, that I mentioned last night is Samantabhadra has a lot of jobs among the four great bodhisattvas. We know Guanyin Pusa, Shun Sheng Jiu Ku. Guanyin Pusa is, you need help from her, you call her name, she will give you a hand. She has a thousand hands and a thousand eyes. So Guanyin Pusa responds to those in need. That's Guanyin Pusa. Earth store Bodhisattva, oh my goodness, his incredible vows. And the interesting thing is that his first vows were made when he was a she in the body of a woman. In the Earth store Sutra, I don't know how many people have never looked at the Earth store Sutra, but if you do, when you open it up, you discover that Earth store Bodhisattva's earliest connection was when she was female and the vows the the practices the great deeds that she did when she was guangwu nu and poloman nu those two particular individuals she became restore bodhisattva as a result very interesting that's so women have a very strong connection with uh, the mahayana tradition then manjushri right now um in fact, today, uh, you all were bowing here, and I was explaining the Wu Fa Jiepin, entering the Dharma Realm chapter uh, from my weekly lecture. And right now, Manjushri, Manjushri Pusa, has a big role in chapter 39. He's the one who starts Shansai Tongzi off on his pilgrimage. So we learn all about Manjushri and his incredible uh, skill at teaching 
bodhisattvas how to behave. Pushin Pusa has more than one job. Let's take a look. Let's find out what Pushin Pusa is supposed to do. Here we go. He is that one helping out Vairochana along with Manjushri. The Huayan San Sheng, it's called the Avatamsaka Trinity of Sages, is Pilu Janafo, Wan Chu Shirli Pusa, Da Hang Pu Shen Wang Pusa. Okay, that's one job. So that's, say, who is Pu Shen Pusa? Who is Samantabhadra? He's one of the Trinity of the Avatamsaka. What else? He is one of the Huayan Hai Hui, Hui Zhu. He is a host of the Avatamsaka. He stands in for the Buddha to explain the Avatamsaka. I mentioned that, and maybe people heard that and didn't quite absorb it. When you go uh, right now, uh, once a week, we meet together to translate the Avatamsaka Sutra. And we're on chapter five right now. We're retranslating it. And who is the speaker? Fu Zha. He's touring everybody around all the different worlds, like a tour guide. On your left, you have the Saha world, lots of suffering. Right? So he is the Huayan Faju, Avatamsaka Dharma host, another job. What else? What else does Pujan Bhusa do? He is the master of meditation. All of the Sanme, he knows. He is the expert on Samadhi. So if you want to know about the uh, the uh, let's say, for example, the Hayin Sanme, the ocean imprint Samadhi, Pushen Pusa. Oh, if you want to know about the Huai and Da Ding, Pushen Pusa is the expert. If you want to know about the Leng and Da Ding, Pushen Pusa is the expert. He's the teacher of meditation because he himself can enter and leave and master all those incredible samadhis, right? There's another job. It's another job he has. What else? Pu Shen Pu Sa is the Huayan Chan Zhu, the confessor. He listens to your repentance. We're going to find out more about him. So in many of the repentance liturgies, you bow and bow and bow, and then you go, Namo da hung pu shen pu sa. Right? When you take refuge, you bow to him. He is the he listens to your confession and he encourages you to work harder. How many people know where that image of Pu Shen Pusa is? Anybody know? Where? Berkeley. Somebody whispered Berkeley. Correct. That's a stained glass bodhisattva. This is a stained glass bodhisattva at the Berkeley Monastery. Correct. Five points. Good. Well done. The one, this one here, I don't know where that one is. But it's a wonderful, uh, when this, the, the sun sets, uh, the, the sunlight comes through the stained glass and it throws these color shadows on the floor. It's really wonderful. Okay, more. Believe it or not, there is more. Samantabhadra, here he is, all these beautiful images of him. He is, as we know, Da Hung Pu Shen Wang Pu right? Most people know him by that job. So, Dali, all these different things, what else is he? He is in Guan Pu Shen Hung Pin, in the Lotus Sutra, it says, if you make a vow, that you want to cultivate a special Dharma practice. Let's say you're going to memorize a sutra. Okay? You make a vow. I'm going to memorize a sutra. And if you want to recite, but then you forget, Samantabhadra Bodhisattva invisibly on his elephant comes behind you and nudges your memory, whispers what you need to recite to finish the, the recitation. That's what it says. He is a true Shan Jishir. He appears to correct the flaws in your recitation and to encourage you to greater effort. 
They say if you can do 49%, he'll add 51. Interesting. How about that? Wow. Who knew, right? Samantha Bhadra has got so many different jobs. All right. Now, uh, let's see here. We're halfway through. Okay. Um, the Liang Huang Bao Chan that we are bowing, do people know where it came from? You know that story. That's part of it, right? So you've heard about Bao Zhi, Chan Shi, Chan Master Bao Zhi. Yes? Do you all know? Okay. That he had bird claws. <laughs> maybe he was part Australia. Maybe he was a parrot, maybe, or a cockatoo. Could do worse. So there's this famous, whenever the name Bao Zhi, Chan Shi, comes up, people who know the tradition, uh, remember this. Not that. They remember this. The wedding banquet. Do you all know this one? Okay. He has uh, a song that he repeats, and this is from Shifu. It says, Gu Gu Guai, Guai Guai Gu. Right, you know this one? What this is, it's amazing. We get to see a wedding party which, you know, probably should be happy, right? But we get to see the wedding party through the wisdom vision of an enlightened monk. Shouldn't a wedding be a cause for celebration and joy? Well, when you look at the karma and its retribution, a deeper, more complex scenario unfolds goes, the, the verse goes like this, ancient and strange, strange and ancient. The grandson marries his grandmother. The pigs and the sheep are sitting on the sofa. The six kinds of close relatives are boiling in the stew pot. The daughter is chewing on her mother's flesh. The son is beating a drum made of his father's skin. The crowd comes to wish the couple happiness. The way I see it, it's nothing but a lot of misery, says the enlightened monk, Master Bao Zhi. Okay, so what's the story? It goes like this. So there's a wedding, and somehow the monk is invited, I guess maybe to give a blessing. And he comes in, and he takes a look at what's going on, but he doesn't look only at the current couple. He looks at everybody in the, uh, in the wedding party, and he looks at their past lives. And he goes, oh my goodness. The story is, there was an elderly woman, and in her family, there was a grandson. And she really, really loved her grandson. She was just totally attached to the grandson. And she died. It was her time to go. And before she left, she clutched her grandson to her bosom and said, I, I, I can't let you go. I will see you again. I vow that we will meet again, she said. Well, vows have power. And so what happened was the grandson grew up 20 years later, took a wife. And guess who it was? <laughs> it was the grandmother reborn who had been born immediately. And 20 years later, now is the, uh, the sweet bride, right? So he comes in, he says, oh, how strange. The grandson unaware is actually marrying his own grandmother. Okay, and then he looks at the people sitting on the Kong 
on the heated bed and he goes oh look you know there's those are they're in a human body but they're they're actually former animals who have now reincarnated as humans to get their revenge on the humans who ate them they're now coming back to eat them to boil in the pot those who ate them in the past so retribution is not off by a hair's breadth and he says the daughter unaware is chewing on a lamb chop she didn't know that the lamb in the pot used to be her mother ooh how so and then the son you know over there we've got a drum right the huagu that you hit every day bunk the bunk 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 right who knows where that skin came from well it could be the father of the, the person beating the drum everybody comes and says oh congratulations bai to jela no no actually a lot of suffering so what a great story unforgettable now <laughs> you should know your reaction as i explain this i see everybody going mhm mm mhm mm yeah when you explain this to an audience without a buddhist background they go <laughs> ooh <laughs> who sings songs like that She loved her grandson so when she died she couldn't let him go now 20 years later she's back again can you believe it she's going to marry him how strange how strange karma's wheel moves on grandma marries her own grandson yes she does got to move it in rhythm dun 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 there we go if you could all see through my eyes this wedding banquet's full of surprises some come to congratulate some come to eat some to be eight don't tell that girl the chop she's chewing on oops sam save us what happened there it is it's back well done wow that was quick the don't tell that girl the chop she's chewing on in her last life was her own mom don't let her know don't tell the drummer the drum he's beating on is his father's skin don't tell him where it's from he couldn't take it how strange how strange karma's wheel moves on Grandma Mary is her own grandson. Don't tell the host, the guests who just arrived, with pigs and sheep in their past lives. Don't tell the guests the dinner cooking merrily. In past lives were all their family. How strange, how strange. Karma's wheel moves on. The grandma Mary is her own grandson. As the diners or the dish we meet again. Are we cannibals who eat our kin? We party on till we awake. Well, it's not bad luck and it's not fate. Do you believe? Do you believe? Karma's wheel rolls on. We all come back until our debts are done. 
Do you believe? Yay. I should tune my guitar. Okay, let's get on to the bowing. Hmm, just lost. Come back. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the question would be, since we're doing so much bowing, and as I asked last night, why do we say Bai Chan or Li Chan uh, in Chinese, bowing of repentance? Why is bowing the thing we do to repent? There's a reason. There's a reason for it. And I think if we understand that bowing comes alive in a way that we wouldn't appreciate otherwise, Okay, what is bowing? Bowing is a ritual gesture that outside shows respect, inside humbles the person who bows. Interesting, so it's got an external and an internal significance, both. The uh, Hua Yanjing, has a commentary, I mentioned Master Chengguan, Qingliang Guoshi. When Master Chengguan comments on the Pu Xin Heng Yanpin, Li Jing Zhu Fo, that first practice, he says, Li Jing Zhi Men, Chu Wo Man Zhang, Fa Qi Jing Xin, Zeng Zhang Shan Gan. That's what he wants us to know. This is a Tang Dynasty monk's uh, advice his understanding of what bowing is about. Bowing in respect purges the obstacle of arrogance. That's the outside part. That's the inside part. Inspires faith and reverence and increases your own roots of goodness. Okay, slow down. What does that mean? Let's take a look at that. Li Jing Jiman, the gateway the method of bowing in respect, chu, that's the verb, gets rid of the obstacle of wo man, this big me. Why? Your head is down at shoe top level. You put your head down at people's feet. You're on the ground, along with the critters, with the insects, with the snakes, with the pedestrians, right? How can you feel so full of yourself when you're flat on the ground. Bowing is very mechanical almost, really material. You're bowing, you're down there on the ground. Chu wo man chang, that's number one. So it does, it works. It does that. Number two, fa qi jing xin. The verb is raises up, increases, uh, inspires, okay? What is it? Jing xin, reverence, respect, and faith because you get a very different perspective on the world when you're lowered down to the ground. From this point of view, above me is just God, right? The Buddhas are up there, the Devas, just me, my head's up high. You know, you don't humble yourself. When you're down, when you actually do that on purpose, oh my goodness, things look very different. And you can feel a reverence to the world around you. Furthermore, it increases your roots of goodness, your good roots. Zeng zhang, here's the verb. It makes them grow your wholesome qualities. So you could just say, when we bow, all of the goodness in our heart grows. It's like it gets fertilized, right? So 
If you were kind-hearted when you bow, you become more kind-hearted. If you were gentle when you bow, it makes you want to be more gentle. Um, this idea of faith and reverence, I'll tell you a story. Um, on the uh, Three Steps, One Bow pilgrimage that I took with my companion, Hung Chao, my, uh, my Dharma protector, my Hu Fa, Hung Chao, he was a Taekwondo black belt. He knew how to kill people with a newspaper. He could kill you with a pencil. You know, he, was, he could look at people's bodies and see immediately where their weakness was. That was what he was good at because he was trained to put you down right away. That was what he did. And uh, so he thought, okay, well, I'll use my martial arts to protect Hung Shur because he's not talking and I need to protect him. So, so Master Hua said, okay, he said, here are your instructions, he said to Hung Chao. He said, you may not use any martial arts in protecting Hung Shur. You may not. In fact, as soon as you throw the first punch or the first kick, you are no longer my disciple. He said, so Marty's like, but Shurva, what can I do? If, I, if trouble comes, what do I do? Shurva said, I will give you four power tools. Use those and you can protect your monk. Marty's like, oh, wow, I get some real Kung Fu. Ah, Kung Fu from Shurva. He said, Okay, Shirfu, lay it on me, he says. Shirfu says, here's what you use in every situation. A great heart of tsu, bei, xi, she. Marty's like, what good is that? <laughs> Who wants that? Shirfu says, if you know how to be tsu, bei, xi, she, kind and compassionate, full of joy and serenity, Nobody can lay a hand on you. Do you believe it? No, Shirvu, I don't believe it. Try it, he said. So Shirvu sent the martial artist Hufa out with Tsubei Shisho as his power tools. Marty said, unbelievably effective. He said, when he was bowing down to the ground, he felt absolutely protected. He felt in the vulnerability of opening yourself up to and having no defense on the ground, bowing down, he said, it demonstrates to the world deep respect and faith. It, you have to believe if you're going to bow. You have to respect people around you because you're at their shoe top. You're at their foot level. Right? And he would bow through the most difficult, we had guns pulled, held, held to our head three times. And Marty bowed, uh, and the <laughs> uh, so there's a town called Santa Cruz, and uh, we bowed through Santa Cruz on a Sunday morning. And because the main Highway 1 in Santa Cruz is, uh, goes through the city, it's very busy. It's called, uh, um, what's the name of the street? I can't think. It has a, the, it's Highway 1, but it has a street name, Memorial Drive. And so we're bowing. We can't bow on Memorial Drive. We have to take a side street. We have to take a parallel street because that's too busy. Uh, so we're bowing through the neighborhoods where people live and sleep and their kids play. And we, there's a, the houses are pretty small where we were. And so to park your car, you have to park on, a, on an incline. The sidewalk is here and the, the driveway is inclined. And then you go up two steps to the house. So the vehicles are above the level of the street parked with a parking brake like that. So the car doesn't roll back. Right. And so we were going Sunday morning about 9 a.m. And this guy comes to the door and he's looking out. And he goes, hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, you can't do that here. Quit that. 
Quit that. We can yell, I don't want you here. I'm not going to let you do that in front of my house, he says. So, <laughs> whoops. Right? Bowing in front of his house. And it's, it's a small yard, just from there to from there to there. And bowing across, the guy says, Hey, I'm not kidding. You get out of there. You ain't doing that devil stuff here, he says. And so our experience is that if you're not giving off angry or hateful vibes, if you're not radiating that, then you don't get it back either. So I just emptied my mind and kept bowing. This guy was determined that we weren't going to bow in front of his house. And we could smell the alcohol. He had had a hard night the night before, Saturday night, partying, and he was hung over and not happy. He was very unhappy. So he says, I'll show you. And he comes running out of the house with his truck keys. His truck is parked on an incline. And he jumps in the driver's seat, and he's going to let the brake off and roll his truck over the monk, like that. And so Marty, Hung Chao, takes one of our flyers that we had prepared and he goes over to the truck window and he says, hi, good morning. He says, we're Buddhist monks on a world pilgrimage, a pilgrimage for world peace. We're on our way to Northern California. Can I give you a flyer? Guy goes, what? What? You're what? You're Buddhist? Oh, Buddhist? Oh, Buddha. Oh, yeah, he's the peace guy, right? Oh, I got nothing against him. I thought you were the other guys. The Krishnas, right? <laughs> he says, oh, that's all right. He says, yeah, tell me more about that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. You can, you can bow there. Namo dafang. Bowing by. So the peace guy got his start like Shurfu did through bowing. This is... You know, how you li jing zhiman, chu wo man zhang, fa qi jing xin, zeng jiang shan gen. Bowing in respect purges the obstacle of arrogance, inspires faith and reverence, and increases our roots of goodness. So, when we are here, bowing to the Buddha every day, uh, with the the wonderful text arranged by Bao Zhi Chan Shi, uh, we are planting our wholesome roots for the future. So I'm really glad, really glad that everybody is here uh, practicing this method. So now this is uh, Master Changguan Qingliang Guoshi's version of what bowing is about. And as we, uh, I have much more here to share with people about bowing. And uh, as, we, as we go uh, on this week, we're going to uh, share more of that as we go. So let's see. I've got some questions here and comments. Let's see here. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Oh, Master, Master Xuanhua visited my hometown, Moor. Okay, Bernie, I didn't know you came from Moor. How about that? Well, Ma Po, uh, Jing Ye Si, correct. Yeah, Jing Ye Si. Anyone else from Ma Po? Nobody? Moor? Yes? Shema. There we go. Che Bian Ye Yo. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Hometown. Hometown friends. Qing Da Jia, Ru Fa Chan Jia, Ting Jing, Jiang Zi Ji. Okay, here we go. English, please. Okay, Pin Mu Ye Tiao Pi. Oh, really? Okay, let's see. Sheng Yin Hen Xiao. Shi Wo Wen Wo De Wen Ti Ma. Okay, Hen Qing Xing. Good, good, good. Okay, Sheng Yin Fei Chang Da. Oh, Shi Shi Zhong Ge Ren De Wen Ti. Okay, Master Hua also came to my hometown in Klang. Says Ethan. All right. Yeah, coast in Klang. 
Coast and Clang was where Master Hua announced to everybody that uh, they were only permitted to offer one stick of incense per person and that they should never again burn paper uh, cars, paper steamships, paper airplanes, Di uh, uh, Chen, hell banknotes. He said, all of these things are completely superstition, he said, right? They, as we approached the uh, monastery at Coast and Klang, uh, outside, was, everything was uh, there to get to the, to the Buddha Hall, where we actually we were in a courtyard because there were so many people. But to get there, you had to walk past all the incense sellers, all the different uh, little ditan that were selling all of these, uh, all these goodies, right? And so, hold on here. Give me one second. So, um, there we go. That's the one. All of the rain makes these strings move. And you have to tune 12 of them. Ah. There we go. Ah, this will sound very nice when it's done. When you tune your instrument, the reward is a beautiful sound. The result? Ah. So there we were, and Shifu really thundered. He gave what's called a lion's roar. And uh, he said, do you all think that the Buddha is greedy like you and that he wants more incense? The more incense, the more blessings. He says you buy incense by 60 sticks in one package and you light them all at once. You smoke the Buddha's face black. You think there's merit and virtue in that? He said. One stick of incense, fa jie meng xun, he said. The whole Dharma realm gets the fragrance. And everybody's like, all the people in the audience were like, ah, <laughs> the next morning, the newspapers all had editorials from Momo Dada, from this great master, from that saying, they said, this, this Dharma master has stopped our income stream. Do not attend his Dharma lectures. And they said, all of the incense sellers have come to us and complained that they, Master Hua has ruined their livelihood. You know, those superstitions die hard. But after we die, does our body go to hell? Can we use the banknotes? Or is that just a scheme to kind of get you to, you know, circulate more money in the pockets of the, so anyway, so I'll never forget Coast and Clang. That was where he said that. And Shurfu honestly became very unpopular among a certain segment of the Malaysian Buddhists at the time. So unforgettable. Okay, time to dedicate merit. I really enjoy getting the opportunity to share with all of us, everybody. And I want us to take this dedication of merit seriously. This is, got it a little bigger. Kandadama, Kandadom, Go Dama. Can we see it in the back? Okay. Uh, I want you to use this opportunity to dedicate merit. This is really how we create our future, one vow at a time. Okay, last night we did Medicine Buddha's mantra for healing, for uh, getting past hunger and cold. This is a general dedication. You can uh, send it out to whatever goodness you would like to create. Okay, here we go.
may every living be our minds as one and radiant with light. Share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness, luminous and bright. If people hear and see, our hands and hearts can find in giving unity. May our minds away to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. May kindness find reward. May all who sorrow leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light dispel the darkness of our endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. All right. Now, right from where you're sitting, no need to stand up especially when your legs have been sitting still for so long, we will bow to the Buddha. Okay, woman, Xing San Wen Xing Li. Let's see, I need to be sure. Yes, there we go, here we go. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Okay, we'll see you all tomorrow. Omitofo. Get some rest tonight.